First time competitor. Thank you. And you? Just telling me he's been a barista for just over a year now, so uh, trained by his brother. So, as I said to you at the start, when you're ready, you raise your hand, that will start your timer. When you're finished, if you raise your hand and say time, mm -hmm. if you need a time check at any point, please feel free to ask us. Enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing you the other side. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. All right, is everyone ready? Time. Uh, hi, I'm Joe. Um, you've already been introduced to me just about a minute ago. This wasn't prepared. Um, I work at Tack Coffee House, and I also work at a place called Home Sweet Home in Manchester. Uh, they're both very contrasting coffee shops. One's very high speed, and one of them is quite. Um, you have a lot of time to work with the coffee. Um, and being trained in both of those environments has sort of gave me, um, I don't know, like a really good appreciation of coffee, but also understanding that you have to be quite fast in how you work. Um, so today I'll be using two different espressos, both roasted by Clifton Coffee. Um, one is a single origin, which is a Guji Shikizo, um, which is what I'll be making for you first. And the second is a house blend that we have made um, at TAC with Clifton. Okay. So my first uh, part will be making the signature drink uh, the first stage, which is to make the single origin coffee um, as an espresso and chill it on ice to get some of the fruity notes out of it, which will be strawberry. Okay. Um, I'm pouring these into jugs um, so I can pour them directly into the chilled glasses that are sitting in the ice bath. I'm looking to slightly over extract these to um, really over emphasize the, like the, the floral, quite fruity properties of this coffee. Um, if you pour it quite short, you get quite a strong wild blueberry to it, but um, the longer you pull that for, the more of the uh, strawberry you'll get. Um, While they're chill, I'm going to make the same espresso again hot, so you can taste some of the more... Um, here's my, uh, sorry, I'll start this first. Yeah, it's one of the most exciting um, espressos I've definitely tasted this year. Um, 
In fact, when we um, at TAC, we used to be with Workshop Coffee. Um, and what we decided to do was look around to see who else was around. And we went to Clifton Coffee in the end. And we asked for a couple of samples from those guys. Uh, and one of the ones they sent was this exact espresso. And I've never tasted an espresso that tasted more distinct than, than, than was described on the, um, on the packet, to be honest. Clean this. Joe, five minutes gone, ten minutes remaining. You. So you'll notice there'll be a strawberry aroma. Um, and I want you to look for the, um, primarily the strawberry coming through. Um, and also... A little hint of vanilla in there. Thank you. And while you enjoy those, I'm going to start the cappuccino. Let's have a round of applause for the espresso course! So the cappuccino that I'll be making is using our own blend of coffee um, from TAC called North Project. It's a 50% Guatemalan, um, I think of San Francisco, it's a, quite a milk chocolate flavour that you'll get through this. Um, it works really well with milk, which is primarily the reason that we, um, we got the blend made up. The next 35% of the blend is, um, is a Kenyan Gatamboya. And that brings fruit and nuts to the uh, to the cappuccino, and it works really well because it um, combined with milk chocolate. Well, you know, Cadbury's milk chocolate fruit and nuts very nice. Uh, and the final 15% is the same Shikizo natural um, that is in the single espresso you've had, and that will give you quite a a very subtle strawberry finish the coffee. I'm going to serve these two at a time um, so I can get them properly right. So from my right to left. So apologies for the wait.
Joe, 10 minutes gone, five minutes remaining. And while I'm working on this, I can explain a little bit more about my signature drink that I'll be making. Um, the idea behind the signature drink is really working on that initial espresso that you tasted hot bringing out those strawberry flavours in the drink. Um, and at Home Sweet Home, the other place that I work at, we are quite quite overindulgent, quite into sweet things. Um, and I've been reading an article recently about something that happened in uh, the 1970s in San Francisco, um, where there was a group of baristas that would mix uh, lots of sweet, expensive things together, such as vanilla beans, vanilla pods. Um, has this gone off? The microphone gone off? Yeah. Um, and the idea behind my drink is to sort of replicate that and the way to bring the strawberry out is to ice the coffee, I feel. Um, save that. Thank you. Uh, and what I want is the idea that the um, as you drink through the drink, you're going to go through the top. Um, if you imagine it to be a strawberry, the drink itself, going to drink through a layer of foam which represents the skin on the outside of a strawberry. Um, you're also going to have the aroma of the mint that I'm going to place on the top. Uh, thank you. Let's get happy, let's get clappy for cappuccinos! Okay, so my espressos are chilled. I'm going to apply two ice cubes in each. Can get two in each, be good. I want to say this as cold as possible, really, um, for the flavour. And what I've done is I've concocted a little, a little mix um, inspired by this um, barista death cream, as it's called. And what is what, it, what is inside of my barista death cream is um, two parts sugar to one part water. Uh, put that to the boil, and then I've got. Vanilla pods split open inside there, and alongside vanilla seeds on their own. Um, it should be like a, a really overindulgent drink, and it should really bring out strawberry flavours. But also, the jacuzzi has a hint of um, vanilla in there itself, so it's also working alongside the espresso. And the final part that I'll need to do is to froth uh, the remainder of this milk with this milk uh, to give it the dry top. Two minutes remaining, Joe. Two minutes remaining. I'm going to combine this inside to get a tiny hint of vanilla. I want a really, really dry foam on the top as well. What I want you to do when you when you drink this um, speciality drink, which I call strawberries and death cream, is to sniff. I've I've ground down some Shikizo Guji uh, prior to coming on stage, and just to get a real smell for that strawberries when you what close your eyes. Um, the idea of the mint on the top as well is, um, well, a it's a visual, uh, almost like a visual cue at the top of the strawberry. But also that smell that you get is almost like um, like if you're in a field of wild strawberries and you decided that you were going to um, pick some and then you smell your hands afterwards and you get like a really fresh green, um, 
like vine smell. So if you'd like to smell those first, uh, I've only got two, so you'll have to share. Thank you. And in your own time, please enjoy. Let's have a big round of applause for Joe Granger from Tack Coffee in Manchester. Come join me. Thank you. So how was that? The most nervous thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I'm on a game design course. I don't talk to people, so yeah. this is good. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you did really well. Um, it you. looked like you'd performed many times before. Have you spent a lot of time practicing? Uh, I have. This last, this last month and a half, I've spent quite a lot of long nights after work. Um, sort of stuck intact, shut us all down at the front, coming out at 12 at night and then going to bed at four because the espresso doesn't wear off until then. Wow. But um, it's, it's been good. It's been really exciting, really honing down the skills. Really good. So you used two coffees. You used a single origin for your espresso, yeah. uh, which was the Shikizu from Ethiopia. Yes. Um, you said a little bit in the presentation about it, but just for the audience, what, why did you choose that? What was the motivation? Um, it was the thing that inspired us to change from workshop coffee originally. Um, it's like a it's, it's really really exciting coffee um and being part of home sweet home and all these really sweet like really exciting um i don't know like we have cakes we have everything and it's almost like making a coffee into a dessert and it makes it accessible for loads of people to to taste um the, i mean i've gave it to a lot of people tried it out in this last month at my coffee shop uh, a lot of people who don't drink coffee and they've really enjoyed it and that's what it was when you tell them coffee is the main component the main part of the drink they're always surprised um it's yeah. that, that moment where somebody kind of goes, wow, coffee tastes different. It can yeah. be uh, uh, open a door to, uh, to, to them enjoying more. Yeah. So then you went on to use a blend in your cappuccino. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the blend, how that was developed with Clifton. And yeah, um, got the opportunity to go down to Clifton and meet Andy, who's in the audience. Um, and he's taught me quite a lot, really, in even the short time that we've been with him. Um, we really needed a, a espresso that would hold up in milk. I mean, in Manchester, it's quite a, a latte cappuccino audience, um, and workshops like roast weren't really working for us in that sense. Uh, so we, we got a 50% Guatemalan, quite a safe chocolatey um, base, then a 35% um, Kenyan uh, Gatamboya in there, which gave it like um, quite a fruit nutty kind of thing. I mean, that's, we, we ca tend to get that from workshops coffee anyway, so we didn't want to go too far afield. Uh, and then the 15% natural that we've included in there gave it a really nice aftertaste, especially in flat whites. Uh, and the cooler your drink gets, actually, because uh, we get customers who sit in all day, um, the cooler the drink gets, the more exciting, I think, the, the, the drink becomes. So, yeah. Fantastic. So, Manchester, um, somewhere for a long time that was a, a desert for great coffee. And yeah. now there seems to be a real scene there. There's lots of great shops yeah. opened up in the last kind of two, three years. Yeah. Tell me a little bit your take on kind of Manchester. Where, sh where should we go if we're visiting Manchester? Apart from, of course, TAC, wow. where we, we would be expected to go and, yeah. and, and to come and see you. Uh, but where else should we go? There's a, there's a place called Caffeine & Co. Uh, Hannah in the audience is um, one of the managers of that Caffeine & Co. And she's been helping me train. Um, she's a previous UKBC competitor. Um, and that's exceptionally good coffee as well. Um, and that's on the, almost the other side of town. Um, so it's quite nice to have that sort of difference. You get two different crowds of people and they keep mixing between the two. For sure, for sure. Because for a long time, it was very much focused in the northern quarter, wasn't it, where yeah. TAC is? And it's great that it's kind of spreading out now too. Yeah. So um, competition doesn't just happen. There's always people in the background who are working hard. And yeah. as somebody who's worked hard in the background for many years, um, I always like to give the competitors an opportunity to thank the people who've helped them get here. So is there anybody you'd like yeah. to thank in particular? Um, I'd like to thank Philip, who's the, the boss at TAC, uh, and has pretty much paid for just about everything that, that has ever been needed for this whole competition, including an entire new £1,000 grinder. And can I just um, jump in here as well as somebody that's funded somebody through Barista Competition a lot? It's expensive! <laughs> it's so expensive! Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, well done. Um, and Andy as well, just for inspiring me, really, and giving us the opportunity to make our own blend and get further into coffee than we've ever been before. Um, and Hannah as well for give me all the time of day, any day of the week, just to pop into tack, spend as long as we needed. And the same with Martin, really. I mean, Martin's competing alongside me. Um, yeah, amazing. It's just great to have all that, sort of, everyone's so interested in coffee and 
gathering together. So hopefully, um, in the next in the coming weeks in Manchester, we're going to make this sort of like little coffee collective that get together every couple of weeks because getting together at night and talking about coffee has been really a really good thing for us. And that for me is what barista competition should be all about. It's the opportunity to meet up with other baristas and kind of share knowledge and learn together. Yeah. Um, and it's great that that's happening. I, I am very excited about the scene in Manchester. Uh, I think it's one of the hot spots for me at the moment and it's great to see somebody like yourself competing Thank for you. the first time. So well done. Please, once more, big round of applause for Joe Granger from Tap Coffee in Manchester. Woo. Thank you.